Hello, in this session, we are going to be talking about creating user accounts in EMS Web. So during this session, we will be talking about how uh, the organization hierarchy works for users, um, the process of creating user accounts, and then once the account is created, how to set it up with the appropriate set of user account permissions for that user. And then finally, we'll uh, talk about how to deactivate a user account as well. All of the information that we're discussing in this session can also be found as written guidance, and that's located under the EMS Web sitemap and guidance on the right-hand side of every EMS Web page, and then just scroll down until you find the user's hyperlink. Clicking on that will download the Word document that contains all of the information regarding uh, user accounts. So if we go to EMS Web and we click on the Admin tab, uh, that will take you to the uh, security uh, and the users table. So this uh, Admin tab is typically only available to the uh, organization administrators um, for that organization. So uh, to create a new user account, it's really uh, pretty simple. Uh, click on new user and uh, when the form comes up, type in the uh, user uh, name, which is the email address. And uh, this email address has to match the email address uh, that was used for that user uh, in EPR Portal. So when the user goes to EPR Portal, um, it looks at their username or their email address. And then when they try to go into EMS Web, it will look for a corresponding uh, EMS Web account using that email address. Uh, go ahead and put in the first and last name, and this will be uh, the name that is displayed in EMS Web uh, when referencing this user. Click on Save User, and that will create the user account. Now, by default, this user account is um, automatically assigned to this default home-only user permission group, and that provides them access to this home tab. So uh, when a user logs into EMS Web, they uh, automatically go to the home tab. From this home tab, they can um, access any task that has been uh, uh, tasked to them, such as a assigned checklist or things of that nature. So if the user is only responding to items that have been tasked to them, all they need is the user permission group of default home only, which is automatically granted to all users. You can um, then customize this user account by uh, detailing what uh, permissions they have to the other tabs in EMS Web. And so you can do that by clicking on the drop-down menu for Add. And then this lists all of the user permission groups that are available. To um, add in a um, user permission group, you can either mark the checkbox if you're going to be adding in multiple uh, user permission groups. Or if you're adding a single user permission group, you can just click on it. So in this example, I'm just going to make this user an organization administrator and click on it. <clears throat> um, so the various user permission groups are um, 
detailed in the written guidance for user account administration. So this Word document goes through all of the uh, user permission groups and details uh, what they are and what uh, permissions they grant uh, access to um, in the EMS web tabs. So we have some pre-made groups um, like organization administrator, auditor, program, media manager. Those are probably three of the most commonly used user permission groups. So the auditor is, is um, um, for uh, a person coming in like that's going to be uh, working on an external audit for that organization. A program and media manager is exactly what it sounds like. And the organization administrator is the highest level of user permission. So the program media manager pretty much has access to everything except for the admin section. Uh, you can also add user permission groups by specific tabs. So if you want them to have access to the home tab um, and the documents tab, then you would just add in the documents. Uh, you also have view only versions for each um, tab. So if you wanted them to be able to only view the documents, but not to be able to add or edit or delete um, documents, you could give them access to the documents view only. And so you can do that to each of the tabs for the admin, the audit inspection tab, EMS tab, and reporting tab. So you can uh, give them um, pretty much a la carte access to each individual tab on an add edit um, basis or a view only uh, basis. So uh, adding in permission groups is uh, pretty simple that way. Uh, so remember, uh, setting up a, a user account is a two-step process. First, you go through and add a new user account. Then you go through, use the Add button, uh, drop-down field to add in specific user groups. And then, um, as well, you can assign them to specific media. And so, um, the specific media shows up uh, when you're using the My Media uh, tab. And so um, if you give them access to a specific media, like drinking water or above ground storage tanks, then when they go to My Media, they will be able to choose those uh, media that have been assigned to their user account. And then when they pick a specific media under My Media, then they uh, see a subsection of all of the EMS web data, and it only shows the data that is tied to that specific media. So it's very handy for um, media managers uh, to be set up that way. So the last thing I want to do is uh, show you how to deactivate a user account. And so there are a couple of ways uh, you can go about it. Um, and this would be used for users that no longer, uh, current EMS web users that no longer uh, need access to EMS web because uh, they've moved on or um, for some other reason. So, um, <clears throat> When you click into their um, user account, you, there is a deactivate button. And if you click on that button, then uh, the user account becomes uh, inactive and that user will not be able to access that account any longer. Uh, deactivated accounts can be uh, reactivated at any time. Um, EMS web users cannot delete uh, permanently a EMS web user account. And the reason for that is because user accounts are so tied into 
all the functionality in the EMS web because users can be tied to tasks and audits and checklists and um, so on. And then a lot of that information becomes uh, historical. Like for example, for a checklist, you want to know who filled it out and when. And so if you delete that uh, related user account, then you lose some of that historical information. And so for that reason, we do not allow for the deletion of uh, user accounts. So once you deactivate a user account, then it is no longer displayed by default under this user table, and they can't uh, log in and um, that deactivated user account cannot be tied to any other uh, information in EMS web. So for example, if you have a new checklist, uh, you can't assign it to a inactive user account. Uh, you can uh, create multiple user accounts for the same user. And so that's typically done for uh, users at different organizations. So you can create an account for them at um, organization A, and then you can navigate to organization B and create another account for them there. So um, I'm currently looking at Naval Station Atlantis, so any new user account that I create will be for Naval Station Atlantis. Uh, when we look at how users uh, are related to the organization hierarchy, um, all of the information in EMS Web follows the general rule that it's all, um, it all flows up the organization hierarchy. So if you're located at a region level, you're able to view all the child organizations that reside below it. So at the regional organization, you're able to see the uh, installation level uh, information. And then that same uh, process is also applicable to user accounts. So if you have a user account at the region, that's an organization administrator account, then you also have organization administrator permissions for all of the installations below the region. So add all of the installations. Um, so if you create a user account at the region level, then there's no need to create user accounts at the individual installations because with that one account at the region level, that user is able to access uh, um, all of the individual installations under that region with the same uh, level of permissions at their regional account. So uh, the most common use for multiple accounts is when you are an auditor and you're going to audit a different um, organization. And then you'll obviously need access to that organization to view their documents, um, fill out checklists for that audit, and so on. And so then um, you can ask for a, another uh, account to be created at the organization that you're being um, that you're going to be auditing. Um, 